episode 5 an update with voiceover for our infrared heating system this video is probably going to be a bit longer than the previous ones because i'm going to go into some detail of what's what the graphs are all about and how i'm recording data and things like that all the costs and usage are based on this system so we have a large solar array but we are also using battery storage and we are on the octopus intelligent tariff which gives us a minimum of six hours off peak power right getting back to the graphs i'm going to start off with this graph i started this graph long before the infrared heating system was switched on so it was still the end of summer and the internal temperatures of the home were hot enough that we didn't need any heating so it started on the 1st of october and the red lines the red lines here um, represent the lounge temperature that's the minimum and maximum of the lounge and the blue lines here are the external temperatures that's the outside temperatures um, in the local area um, and that's the minimum and maximum of them as well so i picked out some reference points um, showing the very cold days and also some of the warm days now the internal target temperatures the bedrooms so that's all the upstairs really um, are set between 18 and a half degrees so the infrared heaters turn on at 18 and a half degrees and they go off at 19 and a half degrees and the downstairs temperatures um, the infrared heaters come on at 19 degrees and they go off again at 20 degrees this is also quite an important graph when explaining what i'm measuring and um, the red line here is actually the cost per kilowatt hour per day so every day i work out how much energy is costing me from what i've pulled from the grid and i'm also including what i've generated from solar which isn't a lot at the moment so, so you can see from the red line that I can pay up to 23 pence per kilowatt hour, which is relatively cheap um, compared to what some people are paying at the moment. Um, but also it can drop down as little as five pence per kilowatt hour. And finally, the blue line on this graph is how many kilowatt hours we've used per day on the infrared heating. It's only on the infrared heating. So I've worked out what every single heater um, has used and how long it's been on for and all that so i can work out how many kilowatt hours um, we've used per day and that brings us nicely onto the next graph this one uh, represents how many kilowatt hours we've used um, all together and also per per infrared heater in each room so the obvious starting point for this slide is the fact that we've used 1,927.75 kilowatt hours on heating since they turned on. So that's when the thermostats were asking for heat and that was on the 27th of October. I have gone into detail on what size the heaters are in each room on the introduction video. But here is a small slide just explaining uh, what we have in the home. And finally, um, the total cost. So the total cost has been £261.76 so far up until the end of December. And if you're interested in the individual costs, that they're on the right-hand side of this graph. And you can see that um, by the coloured lines. And you might want to switch between the kilowatt hours that we've used on each infra infrared panel and the cost just to see the comparison between the two. What this, what this information is showing me basically is how much heat I'm losing in the home um, with infrared heating. Um, I'm also, it's also showing up some weaknesses in the insulation in the home. By the end of these videos, I'm hoping to be able to work out if it's worth buying an air source heat pump um, when you're considering the cost of installation and also the maintenance that goes with moving parts. I'll keep you updated on how the infrared heating system is going, but it has managed to keep the house at the constant temperatures that we desire to keep us all nice and warm and comfy. So, as usual, thanks for watching and taking an interest in my infrared heating project, and please like and subscribe.